Hello everybody, good afternoon. So this is Mr. Chu again. So welcome to my YouTube sharing video session. Today we are going to continue with the discussion for chapter 6A, uh, Chemical Equilibria, where we are going to discuss the technique of how to answer section C, which is the essay part. So before we begin, if you like this video, please help me to click the like button. And if you want to receive further notification, help me to click the subscribe button and push the notification buttons for further notifications, okay? So with the session, let's begin our lesson. Let's start from the essay question number one. Ammonia is a colorless pungent gas, though it has a wide variety of application and is prepared commercially by using Haber process according to the equation N2 plus 3H2 give to NH3, delta H is negative 92 kilojoule. A1, when 1.00 mole of nitrogen gas and 2.00 mole of hydrogen gas are injected to a 2.00 decimeter cube of gas vessels and are allowed to react at 450 degrees Celsius, at the equilibrium, amount of the nitrogen left in the vessel is 0 0.400 mole. So calculate the equilibrium constant for the concentration Kc for the reaction involved, 5 marks, and use the answer in A1 to calculate the equilibrium constant of Kp uh, for the gas constant is 0 0.0821 L a liter atmosphere mole minus 1 Kelvin minus 1. Okay, so if you notice carefully, for all the values inside here, the answer is trying to tell you that you should give your final answer as three significant figure. Okay, so please take notes on all the values given during the examinations. Yeah, so let's have a look at how do we solve this question. So first of all, you need to construct a table that says that initially you have nitrogen plus hydrogen give to ammonia. So you have initially one more of nitrogen, two more of hydrogen, no more of ammonia. And because the question says that the amount of the nitrogen left after the reaction is 0 0.400. So in another word, the amount of the nitrogen reacted is 0 0.6. So econometrically, one to three to two. If the amount of nitrogen reacted is 0 0.6, so amount of the hydrogen reacted is minus three times 0 0.600 0, 0 because stoichiometrically is 1 to 3, while the amount of ammonia formed is 2 times 0 0.6. So at equilibrium, you have 0 0.400 of nitrogen, 0 0.200 of hydrogen, and 1.20 of ammonia. Okay, so uh, calculating Kp is easy because straight away you substitute to become the concentration where Kc is equals to NH3 squared divided by N2 times H2 cube. So don't forget the volume is 2.00, yeah? So it's 1.20 divided by 2.00. Substitute as exactly given to you in the question square over 0 0.400 divided by 2.00 multiplied by 0 0.200 divided by 2.00 cube. So substitution one mark and finally press your calculator. You should get your Kc is equals to 1,800 unit. Huh? Try to be careful with the unit. More minus two dm cube, uh, dm power of six, sorry. So this is how you solve for the Kc problem. Then number two, use the answer in A1 to calculate the equilibrium constant of the partial pressure Kp. So you have to use the relationship Kp is equals to KCRT delta N. Okay? So the question already give you the R is 0 0.0821. So you have to use this value. So Kp is 1800 times 8.31 uh, times 727 Kelvin. So uh, in here... Okay, so two times uh, two minus four. Okay, so at the end you press your calculator, you should get your Kp is zero point five zero five atmosphere minus two. Okay, so that is how you solve for question number one a. As for one b, explain the position of equilibrium and the changes of equilibrium constant, if any when the following changes of the system uh, occur to the system. Number one, argon gas is added to the system under constant pressure. So you have to understand that uh, adding inert gas, there are two situations. One is under constant pressure, another one is constant volume. If it is under constant volume, the pressure will not be influenced. So adding argon gas will not influence the equilibrium system. Therefore, uh, position does not shift to anywhere. But in this case, you are adding argon under constant pressure. So P total is pressure. If you add the gas, the partial pressure will decrease. Okay. So when the partial pressure of the system or the gas decrease, equilibrium will shift to the direction with more total mole of gas. Okay. So in here, left side has more total mole of gas, therefore equilibrium shift to the left. Okay, so if you want to add your answer, you might also want to add because question also ask if there is any changes of equilibrium constant. So you should say that equilibrium constant remains the same. Okay, as for number two, temperature of the uh, temperature of the system increase. 
So always remember to write this. Uh, you must always mention since forward reaction is what process. So in this case, since forward reaction is exothermic, increasing temperature will cause the equilibrium to shift in the direction of endothermic reaction. So in another word, which is to the left. Okay. So as a result, equilibrium shift to the left. And what will happen to the uh, amount of reactant and product? Reactant and product. A reactant increase, product decrease. So Kc will automatically decrease in this case because the only factors that influence the Kc and Kp are temperature. So you have to be very careful in this case. Yeah? Okay, so that is for question number one. Immediately we go to question number two. Water gas, a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide is an important industrial fuel from your, according to the chemical equilibrium, C plus H2O gives CO plus H2. So not that C is in solid. Huh? So at 800 Kelvin, the value of the Kc is 0 0.160 mole per decimeter cube. And the delta H is positive 131.3 kilojoule. A, a 1.00 decimeter cube of flask containing 1.00 mole of carbon and 1.00 mole of steam is left to uh, at equilibrium to 800 degrees Celsius. Calculate the concentration of component in each equilibrium at this temperature, 7 marks. So as usual, you're going to construct the table, carbon plus hydrogen uh, water gas, give carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. So initial, you have 1 mole of carbon, 1 mole of water. So at equilibrium, 1.00 minus x, 1.00 minus x, CO and H2O will be plus X plus X. Why? Because uh, stoichiometrically, one to one to one to one. Okay. However, when, during expression of Kc, Kc is equals to concentration of CO times concentration of H2 divided by H2O. So you have to eventually calculate accordingly. Lah. They already give you the Kc, eh, which is 0 0.160. It's equals to X divided by the uh, decimeter cube plus so 1.00 multiplied by x divided by 1.00 divided by 1.00 minus x over 1.00. So uh, in here, carbon is not considered inside the equilibrium because carbon is a solid in here. So you have to be extra careful. So after calculation, you can get your x is equal to 0 0.328. So you have to mention the concentration of each component. So carbon monoxide is 0 0.328 mole per decimeter cube. Hydrogen is 0 0.328 mole per decimeter cube. Water is 0 0.672 mole per decimeter cube. Okay, so that is the concentration for the carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and also water in here. Then B, explain the effect of increasing temperature on the concentration of each component in the system and the rate of attainment. Okay, so increasing temperature will cease the forward reaction is an endothermic. So always remember, must mention, since forward reaction is what process. Only then you start to explain. So uh, what happens is when the forward reaction is endothermic, increasing temperature will cause the uh, equilibrium to shift to the direction to endothermic, which is equilibrium shift to the right. So as a result, concentration of the water decrease while the concentration of CO and H2O increase. And always remember, the, in this case, uh, Kc will also increase. Uh, okay? Kc will also increase. You must also mention this. Okay? okay, as for the rate of attainment at equilibrium, rate is talking about speed. So you must mention what happened to the speed. So increasing temperature will cause the frequency of the condition uh, to increase as the kinetic energy also increase. So as a result, more molecules has energy greater than the activation energy. Rate constant for both direction also increase, therefore increase the rate of attainment for the equilibrium. Okay, so that is how you should answer for number B2. Okay, so with that, that is for question number two. Immediately we go to question number three. The dependence of the equilibrium constant on the reaction of temperature given by the Van Hoff equation K is equals to epsilon negative delta H of RT. The following table gives the equilibrium constant Kp for the reaction at a certain temperature. So you have 2NO plus O2 gives 2NO2. So this is the series of Kp and the temperature in Kelvin. So determine graphically delta H for the reaction. So in here, uh, you have to re-express the Van Hoff equation as long K equals to delta H over RT plus C or whatever you want to add later. Okay, then uh, using this expression, you will know that you need to plot the graph of ln k against 1 over t. So you need to replot the table 
okay, and uh, recalculate the value. Uh. So 1 over t, 0 0.167, 0 0.00143, 0 0.00125, 0 0.00111, and 0 0.00100. So in this case, try to maintain your significant figure to be three significant figures. Okay, so same goes to the long KP. Try to maintain a three significant figure. Then you have to plot the graph using the information that you calculated. So this is the graph. Okay, and uh, the graph shows a positive gradient. Huh? So positive gradient, actually positive negative gradient of this graph indicates the process. If the graph is in a positive gradient, okay, so the process is an exothermic. And conversely, if the gradient is a negative gradient, then the process is an endothermic process. So in this case, the process is exothermic. So you have to take notes that delta H should have a negative value at the end of the day. So using the gradient where you have delta H over negative delta H over R equals to the gradient in here. You so you take any two points that you like. So uh, eventually, uh, you have. Delta H is equal to negative 166 kilojoule per mole. So we accept the range anywhere between 160 to 180 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So with that, that is how you should calculate the delta H of the system using uh, the Van Hoff equations. Okay. So that is for number one. Then we go to B. Lightly increase the temperature of air to 33,000 degrees Celsius. So this caused the atmospheric nitrogen to react with oxygen in the air to form nitrogen monoxide according to the equation. So number one, why does the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen in air occur only uh, lightning and not under normal atmospheric condition to max? And then the presence of the nitrogen oxide eventually deplete the ozone layer according to the series. Explain the role of nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide in the reaction of six months. Okay, so why does nitrogen uh, and oxygen only occur at this temperature? So this has something to do with the chemical bonding. So you must mention that nitrogen has a short and strong triple bond. Therefore, require high bond energy or require high heat to break the strong covalent bond. So this is a very common question to ask about the inertness of the nitrogen. And that is why you require a very high temperature to break the covalent bond. Okay, okay. number two, explain the role. So if you are given a series of steps, definitely the first thing that you need to write is the overall equation for the reaction. So you need to write the overall equation for the reactions. And based on the overall equation, you can eventually deduce what is the role of nitrogen monoxide and nit nitrogen dioxide. So nitrogen monoxide in here act as what we so call as a homogeneous catalyst. Sorry, eh? it's a homogeneous, eh? not heterogeneous. Eh? Homogeneous. Uh, so uh, why is it a homogeneous catalyst? Because reactant and catalyst have the same phase or same state of matter. So the presence of the nitrogen monoxide lower the activation energy. Then, uh, however, nitrogen monoxide is unstable due to the presence of the radical in the molecule. And therefore, nitrogen dioxide acts as the intermediate for the reaction. Okay, so it will appear and then it will disappear eventually. Okay, so the overall equation is 2O3 give 3O2. So that is how you are going to explain the role of the nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide in these processes. These are in STPM syllabus. So hopefully you must be able to explain well in this case. Huh? Okay, so with that, that is for question number three. Finally, we go to question number four. Based on the following equilibria, we have two equilibrium, H2O plus C give H2 plus CO. Uh, equilibrium 2, 2 CrO4, 2 minus plus 2 H plus give CrO2 minus plus H2O. Using Lee Chatelier principle to explain the, predict and explain the effect of number one, increasing pressure of system one, uh, increasing pressure of equilibrium one, increasing temperature of equilibrium one, and increasing H plus in equilibrium two. So you need to explain uh, what is the effect of increasing pressure. So increasing pressure will cause equilibrium shift to the left. Why shift to the left? Because concentration of the, uh, because uh, left side has less total mole of gas. So when left side and less of the mole of gas, therefore equilibrium shift is left. So uh, what will happen to the concentration of hydrogen and carbon monoxide? Concentration of hydrogen and carbon monoxide decrease while H2O as in gas, uh, not liquid, uh, gas, uh, increase. Okay. So KP, uh, however, KC and KP does not change. So you must also. So as a student, you don't predict where are the marks located. Just try your best to explain to the max. Okay. Okay, and then number two, increase the temperature. So since forward reaction is an endothermic process, equilibrium shift the right. So what happened? Concentration of CO and H2 will increase while the concentration of H2O decrease. So at the same time, KC and KP will also increase. 
And so number three, what happens when you increase the concentration of H plus? So when you increase concentration of H plus, equilibrium shift to the right. So therefore, decreasing the concentration of ClO4 2 minus while increasing the concentration of Cl2072 minus. Okay, so it is a very straightforward question. Huh? Okay, then 4B. The main reaction of contact process for the manufacture of sulfuric acid is described below. So 2SO2 plus O2 give 2SO3. So when the ratio of 2 to 1 ratio of sulfur dioxide and oxygen at the total pressure of 3 atmosphere pass through a catalyst at 430 degrees Celsius, partial pressure of the sulfur dioxide at each found was to be 1.9 atmosphere. Number one, calculate the partial pressure of SO2 and O2 at equilibrium, hence determine the new pressure and the percentage of conversion from SO2 to SO3, three marks, and write an expression and count calculate its value for three marks in here. So uh, in here, you need to, as usual, write out the equilibrium constant, and then you have to start uh, when the initial, uh, since the ratio is two to one and the total pressure is three. So in another word, sulfur dioxide is two atmosphere, oxygen is one atmosphere. So at equilibrium, 1.9 sulfur trioxide is formed. So if here is 1 plus 1.9, stoichiometrically 2 to 2. So sulfur dioxide minus 1.9, oxygen minus a half of 1.9, which is 0 0.95. So at equilibrium, sulfur dioxide is 0 0.1, oxygen is 0 0.05, sulfur trioxide is 1.9. So uh, how much is the percentage of conversion? So P total is equals to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 plus 1.9. So partial pressure of the sulfur dioxide is 0 0.1. Uh, oxygen is 0 0.5. And percentage of the conversion of sulfur trioxide is 1.9 divided by 2.05, 100%. You get 95% conversions. Okay. Okay, finally, write an expression of Kp and calculate its value. So Kp is a partial pressure of SO3 square divided by partial pressure of SO2 square times O2. So you substitute accordingly 1.9 square divided by 0 0.10 times 0 0.5. So you get 7,220 atmosphere minus one. Okay, so it's a very straightforward calculations. So hopefully you'll be able to calculate well, okay? Okay, so I believe that is all for the discussion for the essay part. Hopefully, you can benefit from the solutions that I shows you in here. So I guess that is all for the part C for this um, chapter. So I guess I'll see you in the next coming chapter, which is acid-base equilibrium. Okay, so that's all for our video today. See you around. Bye.